To look more at recursive binding, let's step back and look at what plate gives us for recursive definitions. Uh, in general, we can use local, and inside of local we have square brackets with some definitions. These definitions can be regular definitions, uh, like define x to be 10, uh, in which case this expression produces 11, because we're allowed to use the x and the body of the local. But these def definitions can also refer back to themselves. There's no constraint against that. Um, for example, we can define a function f that takes an x, and it just calls itself with that same x. So if we call f with 1, that will be the same as f called with 1, which will be the same as f called with 1, and so on. This will be an infinite loop. So while this may not be a useful program, uh, in terms of looking at recursive binding and make sure, making sure that we can refer to a definition from itself, um, infinite loops are going to be good for this little segment. Here's something else we could try with local. We could say define x to be x. Since local makes this x available on the right-hand side of the definition, we could write this. Um, it would parse syntactically, but the problem is that x has no specific meaning, right? Um, it's, it's a circular definition in the truest sense. We're not calling a function. This shouldn't be an infinite loop. Uh, it's supposed to return a value, but there's no sensible value to return. In fact, plate will raise an error. It'll say you can't use x before it's initialized. So x is bound in the sense that we can refer to it, but when we actually try to refer to it at runtime, it has not been initialized yet with any value. Okay, so this is an approach to allowing arbitrary right-hand sides, allowing back uh, references within the definition to itself, but still raising an error when uh, the definition doesn't make sense, as it does with a recursive function. How about this case? Now I'm not defining x to be just x, I'm defining it to be list of x. Uh, but still, when we try to make this list, we will have to refer back to x, and x doesn't have a meaning yet. So in this case, again, we will get an x cannot use before initialization. So, so far the only thing that's made sense is to have a function definition instead of these attempts to put arbitrary expressions on the right-hand side. We could still write a function definition this way. So instead of using the shorthand f of x, I'm written define f, and I put a lambda on the right-hand side. Is this allowed? Does this work? Does f have to be available before we, uh, we can bind f? You know, does f have to be available to create this lambda? And the answer is no, because lambda delays the reference to this f until later, until the function is called, then this works out. In other words, the function shorthand really is just a shorthand for writing lambda, and we're allowed to put any sort of expression that we want on the right-hand side, and if that expression is an immediate lambda, things work out. We've been using the local form, but we're working our way towards letrec and in uh, curly. So let's switch to plates letrec form for, for more examples. Again, I could write letrec uh, f with the lambda on the left. And in fact, with letrec, since we don't write the word defined, we can't use the function shorthand. So this is the way to write a recursive function using letrec. Right? This says f is the function that takes x and calls f on x. We're allowed to refer to f and uh, that reference is delayed until f is in fact initialized. So again, we have a good infinite loop here. Here's a case where I've written something on the, uh, the left-hand side that's not a lambda. It's a list, uh, and it's a list containing a function, where that function refers back to the list. f here is really a, a list, not a function, but if we take the first of that list, we get a function. And then we can apply the first of the list, right? This extra parent here is applying that first thing on the list to x. And then in the body of the function, we do the same thing. We take the first thing out of the list, which will be the function, and apply it to 1. The question is, does this work? To create this list, do we need to have f ready? And the answer is no. This will be an infinite loop, which is good, um, because, uh, because the lambda here will, again, delay the reference to f as a list until we actually pull it out later and call that function. So this is an example of something that would not work with our makerec encoding of letrec because the thing on the right-hand side here is not a lambda. It's a list containing a lambda. And yet it can still make sense and it can still run because the reference to f is delayed long enough.